and uh, going to get the scripture for the show, which is Matthew chapter 24, verse 20. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. All right, so, uh, of course, the show is called Friday Night Sabbath, so some people may say, you know, how is Friday night the Sabbath? And is the Sabbath even still in effect? Well, as we see here in Matthew 24 and 20, this is future prophecy that Christ is speaking. So showing us the Sabbath is still in effect. It's never been done away with. It is forever. It's the seventh day of the week. And the day starts when the sun goes down. So, of course, Saturday being the last day of the week, the day would start Friday night and would end Saturday night. All right. And here we are going into the winter time. Um the winter Sabbath is Saturday night to Sunday night, which is also the eighth day of the feast of dedication. All right, so definitely a, a very holy weekend and time of the year for us as we celebrate these uh Sabbaths or Shabbats while the rest of the world um, prepares and continues to get ready for Christ's Mass or Christmas, a pagan holiday. All right, so, uh, you know, we, we follow the Bible, we follow the words of Christ and the word of the Most High God that's, that's written in the Bible. And uh, Christ kept the Sabbath, he kept the holy days. He did not follow pagan holidays. All right, so um, being that we are in the winter time, things are getting colder. As you look look around the country, you see uh, lots of snow, lots of ice, certain parts of America, and uh, you know all over the world, to be honest. And uh, so maybe now it is understandable why Christ said to uh, pray that your flight be not in this time. You know, who would want to? Uh, have to flee to safety in the, in these conditions when it's cold and it's wet outside and you have to foot it for safety. Where are you going to go? You know, you're out in the cold. How, where are you going to get food at? You know, so, uh, but understand the enemy will use these elements against us. All right, so on Fridays um, for the blog talk, we like to go into prophecy, seeing that this is a time that... Um, that Christ warned us to pray that nothing happens. And uh, so we want to be mindful of everything that's going on around us, being that we're in very prophetic times, a lot of things happening right now in the world as things continue to rapidly speed up. Uh, Bible prophecy is, is fulfilling and unraveling every day by the millisecond. And is um, it, things are moving so fast um, just as the scripture says, the days are being shortened for the elect's sake. If not, then no flesh would be saved. So, you know, there's an orchestrated agenda by uh, Satan and his workers, the uh, the rulers of the darkness of this world, who are, you know, more commonly known as the Illuminati or the New World Order. Those at the top of the pyramid that are working together to eradicate the Most High's creation and specifically coming after the woman and the remnant of her seed that keep the faith of Christ and the commandments. Right, this is who this is all aimed at. It's aimed at those elect. So the Most High has to shorten the days because this is who it's aimed at killing. All right, so um, some news, some headlines and things that have happened this week. Um Probably one of the, the main things that they've announced is the death of Nelson Mandela. Um, you know, I'm not going to really speak too much on Nelson Mandela because there's a lot of, you know, information out there that some saying that, you know, he was a good guy, some saying he was a bad guy. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, as far as, you know, what he stood for, was righteous as far as ending the oppression of black people 
and uh, apartheid, that whole concept. So that concept is righteous. Um, as far as um, himself personally as a man, I mean, that's not for me to, uh, I don't I don't know him personally. And like I said, there's not any information that I can go by to make a conclusion on him as, as a man personally. So I'll just focus on the actual uh you know the uh, the concept of what he stood for, as far as what he was um, labeled as standing for, and the upliftment of our people. Um, I do know that he spent 27 years in prison. So, you know, typically, if you're working with the elite and you're working for Satan, typically, you're not going to do 27 years in prison. You may spend 90 days in jail as a wake-up call to get you in line so that you'll follow whatever it is that you're not doing. But typically, you're not going to serve 27 years. So, uh, but, but like I said, that's that's a, a you know story, you know, in itself. But just wanted to put that out there as far as, um, you know, major news that's happening right now and this week. And I'm going to go over to the first article that we have for tonight's show. And um, we've talked a lot recently in the last few weeks about the uh, the beast, all the all the devices that the beast has set up um, and, and is setting up uh, as ways to destroy uh, the remnant of that woman and uh, the Most High God's creation in this earth. All right, he's setting up uh, his technology, which, when you break it down, the biometrics and the surveillance and the military, all the weaponry. And um, another thing that's been set up is money. The monetary system is another thing that's been set up as a as a tool and a way to control and to uh, get people to worship and chase after money so that they can build up the system of the beast, so that they can feed the beast, continue to build up this construct, this, this illusion that we see, that we think is real life in reality, but is actually um, a fairy tale. It, it's a false reality that we've been placed in. And as long as money's in place, then we'll continue to chase after that dream of of the life in this world when the, the, the Bible tells us to deny ourselves and follow after Christ and build up our riches and store our treasure up in a place where moth nor dust do corrupt. And, um, you know, people are living for themselves. That's what money does. Money will have you living for yourself. Money will bring out, as the scriptures say, the root of all evil is the love of money. So once you have that love for money, now you lose all sense of righteousness and operating righteously. You know, treating people with, uh, you know, honor and dignity and um you just you just you start to operate selfishly and, and greedily and you now you you can never have enough it's never enough the more money you get the more you got to have but the more responsibility comes with the more money you have a lot of people don't understand that and it doesn't come for free you think that you know you have you get money and and it's a good thing but it, it doesn't come for free because, um, you know, Christ asked us, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What is it? What is the profit of man to gain the whole world but to lose his soul? So it does you no good to have all this money and then to lose your soul on top of that. There's no value. It's vanity. This is the whole purpose of the beast. And what good does it do you? You sold your soul for money. And then here soon the money will have no value and you'll and you'll have nothing to show for it. You have no soul and the money will have no value. And that's what we're moving into. So the first article is dealing with money and what 
the ultimate goal is, which is leading up to the mark of the beast. This comes off of God's dash kingdom dash ministries dot net dated November 23rd, 2013. It says here, 23 countries move to bypass the U.S. dollar. For several years, financial analysts, primarily those outside the mainstream of uh, academia, academia, excuse me, have been warning that any day could be the black swan event that collapses the dollar and ends U.S. hegemony as caretaker of the world's reserve currency. That day has finally arrived as on November 18th. A former head trader for a major financial institution issued a harbinger and stated that 23 countries and 60% of the world's GDP are right now setting up new swap lines which bypass the dollar. SWIFT and the BIS will usher in a new global currency system which will kill the dollar. The list of 23 countries which are creating new swap lines outside of the dollar include China, Russia, India, and surprisingly, Germany, France, and the United Kingdom. This means that the Eurozone itself is abandoning the dollar and preparing for a transition to a new central banking system. The BRICS Bank, established in South Africa, in September of 2012, apparently will be replacing the Federal Reserve and the current Bank of International Settlements. When the dollar is no longer needed for international trade, its collapse will be spectacular. It appears that Germany, France, and the UK are taking steps now to abandon the dollar as well. So I find that interesting that the BRICS Bank which was established in South Africa in September of 2012, will be the new Federal Reserve once America's gone. So they've already set up in place life after the dollar and after America. Speaking of South, South, South Africa, Nelson Mandela in the news this week, who was the icon of South Africa. All right, so... Again, when these things happen, it's it's not by chance. All right, it, it's it's by design. As as the, the central bank and the new central banking system will now be uh, set up in South Africa after the fall of the Federal Reserve in America. And you would say, okay, well, isn't it isn't Germany, France, and the UK? Aren't they all? Allies of America, why are they abandoning the dollar? You may not understand, but that's where understanding the Bible is key to understanding what's going on in the world. No matter how much knowledge you have about the New World Order, the Illuminati, the, the, the banking you know, elite, all of these entities and corporate powers, if you don't have any biblical knowledge behind that, you you don't have much because the Bible tells you why the UK, Germany, France, and the European countries are abandoning the dollar. Let's get it. Revelations chapter 17. Revelation 17 and 16, it says here, And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Okay, now again, to get an understanding on this is very is very deep. I mean, it's, it's a lesson in itself. But just to break down this precept, when you look at the ten horns and understand, the ten horns came out of the fourth beast in the book of Daniel, chapter seven. The fourth beast is the Roman Empire. So when you go back and look at the ancient Roman Empire and you look at the ten countries that sprung up out of the Roman Empire, you have the major ten European countries. 
And these represent the ten horns. So the European Union today, ten horns. Now, when you read it here, <clears throat> it says these ten horns shall hate the whore. So who is this whore? This whore is America, the whore that rides the beast. So you have a woman or a spirit that's riding this beast, riding this empire. Because the beast represents the spirit behind all the major empires that have been in power in the earth. So America is riding that beast now. She's riding that power. She has all of the empires that have ever been in the earth combined into her. So she's riding that beast. The European Union is slowly but surely taking down America. It says they these ten horns shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked. So right now what you're seeing with this whole um, transitioning and bypassing the dollar by the European countries is making America desolate and naked. They've already been bailed out through the American system. American banking system has bailed out all these European countries. So now that they have sucked America dry and now America's you know, dived further in debt. They've made her desolate. They've made her naked. Eventually shall eat her flesh, meaning they're going to dismantle America piece by piece when this collapse happens. And eventually, after they're finished and they can suck nothing else out of America and can't use it for anything else, they will go, they will burn America with fire, with nuclear fire. And it will be a burnt offering to Satan, to the beast, a holocaust. Because that was the whole purpose of the ten horns from the very beginning, was to build up America as the new Atlantis, as the new Babylon, only to destroy it, to get the power back from the original place where it started in the European, uh, in the whole European region. Verse 17, for the Most High hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will. So you ask, why are they doing this? Why are the allies, so-called allies of America, ditching the dollar? Because the Most High hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will. His will is to destroy America for what America has done. See, Satan thinks that what he's doing is, He's really doing something here, but it's the Most High's will the whole time to, 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 for it to be this way. So the Most High has put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of the Most High shall be fulfilled. So they're going to give the kingdom of this world unto the beast after America is gone. So let's get the precept to that. Jump, Jump up. To verse 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. So after America falls again, these ten horns who have do not have power yet, the European Union does not have power yet, but they're slowly building up their power from America and, and taking it from America. They will receive power as kings one hour with the beast, meaning that they're going to have a short time span that they are going to rule from the European Union with the spirit that is referred to as the beast, the Antichrist system. Verse 13, these have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. So these ten horns are one. They have one mind. That thus the European Union. The European Union is one. All right. You have the um, you have the, uh, the the European Union, and you have the United Nations. And um, we're going to talk about this power shifting from America over 
to the European Union and how you're, you're slowly seeing things transitioning, not just with the bypass of the dollar, because after the dollar's bypassed and collapsed, you know, this will make way for the mark of the beast. All right, they have something out right now which is called bitcoins, the new currency that's being implemented, that's being used right now to help speed up the collapse of the dollar because as more and more people start using other currencies, it only is going to weaken the world's reserve currency, which is the dollar. Now, they're not ready to collapse the dollar just yet. They're continuing to get things in place so when the dollar collapses, they have a complete surveillance grid in place to be able to track every person in this earth because if you can't track them then you can't control them if you can't track them and you can't control them then you don't have control of their souls and you can't destroy them this is the whole agenda of Satan to eliminate all of the Most High's creation. Next article. Other things are putting in place. So when things collapse, they have a complete surveillance grid in place. They came out and already said this week that things we already knew, but now the government is admitting it, that, hey, we have the ability to control your webcam on your computer you don't even have to have internet connection and we still can tap into your computer and control your computer we can look through your webcam and see you they're admitting it now they're admitting that they have been surveilling and they have control of everybody's phone and they can tap into phone conversations and listen to what you're saying they're admitting that they're doing this to everybody they don't need a cell phone connection or a Wi-Fi connection to your phone. They can still tap in, even when your phone is turned off, and listen through your speaker and hear what you're saying. That's why it's called a smartphone. All right? They want everybody to have a smartphone. Everybody. That's why your phone can now... With the smartphone, it can scan barcodes. It can scan the new barcode. And you can scan things into your phone through the new barcodes that they have out. All of this is technology of the beast, and they're using people as guinea pigs to bring about their agendas. They're targeting the youth and making it cool, making it fashionable, making it a fad and making it trendy to have the latest technology, to have the latest gadgets, to go out on Christmas and buy the newest TV that will spy on you, the newest this gadget and that gadget that's there to spy on you, to get the latest car and get rid of the old car because the new car has all the technology and computer in it to be able to control it. You're seeing people die. Paul Walker, Michael Hastings, you're seeing people die in these bizarre Plane, plane crashes and car crashes. Technology of the beast. Examiner.com. Vermont to issue real IDs in 2014. And um, this article also was released on November 23rd, 2013. It says here, Vermont will begin issuing real IDs on January 1st, 2014, Fox 44 reported on Thursday. The licenses and IDs will show compliance with a gold star to the right of the ID number. So here it is. They got a five-pointed star, a gold star, to the right of your ID number on your real ID card, the, the five-pointed star, which is the pentagram. Which is the, which is the uh, basically the seal or the face of Satan, showing you who the allegiance is to, and getting you to be in league, in allegiance with the beast, slowly but surely. 
says here, the Coalition for a Secure Driver's License announced in February that Vermont joined 18 other states in becoming real ID compliant. So 18 other states are already real ID compliant. At the time, the organization's president, Brian Zimmer, said the country is safer today because more than a third of all states are compliant with the 39 individual rules that are essential security standards. For those familiar with the cult numerology, you, you see the number 39 there, or 13 times 3. Taken together, 30% of the adult population will soon be carrying a genuinely secure driver's license. So again, they're doing this in the name of safety and security, peace. In addition to meeting the 9-11 Commission recommendations regarding secure standards for reliable identity documents, this progress will help to reduce fraud wherever proof of identity is key to state or federal benefits. So it's all about reducing fraud, so they say, and proof of identity. And notice how this all comes because of what happened on September 11th, 2001, 9-11. All of these things are being implemented behind this. But I thought Osama bin Laden was dead. I thought al-Qaeda was on the run. I thought troops were coming home from Iraq and Afghanistan. So why the ramp up? People aren't paying attention. People aren't questioning these things. People are saying, sure, we need safety. We need to secure ourselves from these terrorists. Feeding the beast. It says here, we in virtually every other state have been moving forward in becoming real ID compliant. Division of Motor Vehicles Commissioner Robert Ide told Fox 44. The National Immigration Law Center said that 911 hijackers obtained 13 driver's licenses and 21 federal or state issued IDs. More occult numerology. See the numbers 9, 11, 13, and 21. And so these these numbers that they use aren't just by chance. This all this is all occult magic. It's all part of their spell. And they have meaning. They communicate through numerology. For those that have the eyes to see and ears to hear, know what these numbers mean. It says here of these uh, 13 driver's license and, and 21 federal or state issued IDs, none of them were forged. However, seven hijackers used false statements of residency to obtain IDs in Virginia. And all of the hijackers entered the U.S. legally. Virginia is, is still not real ID compliant. So, again, they're going back to 911. They're saying because of these terrorists, and um, them using false statements of residency, we need to tighten that up. We now must bring out the real ID to eliminate this this ability to commit fraud. This is how they slowly turn the pot on boil so that you don't know that you're being cooked. It says the act was passed and signed into law in 2005, but many states have held out because they believe it is a national ID card. Fox 44 said that Vermont residents' information won't be stored in a national database. Now, do you believe that? Do you actually believe that? With all the national databases being created right now and all these, these uh, scandals breaking out with the government, admitting that they're spying on people and surveillancing people and creating databases worldwide, and you, will, and you would believe that they're not going to store this in a national database? It says here, those born on or after December 1st, 1964, will have until December 1st, 2014 to obtain one. 
people born before December 1st, 1964 will have until December 1st, 2017 to open the new ID. Without the real ID, citizens won't be able to board commercial flights, enter nuclear power plants, or enter federal buildings. So without this real ID card, you will not be able to get on a plane. And if you were born after December 1st, 1964, you must have it before the, the, the year 2014 is over. Before December 1st, 2014, you'll have to have this card. And that's not to say that that date can't change, but that's the dates that we have right now. You say, okay, well, um, you know, this is happening in America, but what about other places in the world? Well, we talked about the Ten Horns. So, simultaneously, as this is going into implementation in America, you have here off the website, um, let me see here. That's uh, namastepublishing.co.uk. It says here, red alert, UK global smart ID being rolled out. November 13th, 2013. By Julie Beal. We're going to get an audio clip of Julie Beal here in a moment. In a moment. It says here, I hope by now I'm starting to get through to people about online identity management because here in the UK, a whole lot of folk are about to be forced to sign their life over to an identity provider. The UK government has decided to host all of its public services online to fulfill the digital by default strategy. The government Digital strategy is now expected to be up and running by April 2014. Five companies have been chosen to provide identity management for UK citizens, one of which the post office will serve as, a, as registration centers for biometric smart ID enrollment. When I try to tell people about this and how it's a global scheme, they just don't seem to hear me. I can only think that the power of the media is responsible. They simply aren't informing the public properly about this matter. So because you're only hearing it from me, it perhaps doesn't seem as real. Well, it is. Horribly so. There aren't any glossy adverts for it yet, but if you wade through the documents and listen to lectures and webinars aimed at industry professionals, it's all there on the web. Educating the public seems to have been ruled out, and instead, people are being drawn in by only being able to access certain services by using an identity provider. This rules out debate and the right to be informed. In the U.S., Obamacare and access to personal electronic health records will kick off national IDM take-up while in the UK it's beginning with access to government services. See that? In America, through Obamacare, it's being done um, through personal electronic health, health records, and in the UK they're doing it when it comes to accessing government services. And both of these, on both sides, are kicking off the national IDM take up no matter how private you're told IDM makes you there will always be an audit trial or audit trail and a host of exemptions from peaking maybe you're already one of the many victims of the transition to AI government those wishing to claim job seekers allowance must already make their claim online it is not possible to do this by interacting with a human in any way. The thing is, the next stage is forcing people to sign up with an identity provider to prove they are who they say they are, 
when they use government services which are only available online. So now, again, because of fraud, so they say, you must now prove who you are. And this is the only way to do it, through the technology of the beast, through the biometrics of the beast, which are only available online. It was supposed to start next month. For example, the transition to universal credit, the new benefit which will replace most of the current ones, was meant to introduce identity management to the UK by requiring all claimants to authenticate themselves online by using an IDP. Mind control and narrative psyops, happiness brigades, could soon be part of every town and smart city making us brimful of sunshine to fulfill the United Nations mandate for gross global happiness funded by DARPA. We've talked about DARPA. Talked about DARPA. DARPA is the the uh, a, a military branch of the Pentagon that you that's creating all of these robots all of this transhumanism in, in creating uh, people into cyborgs and these robot armies, which we're going to go into that next week, it would be the most high's will. And um, so what we want to do is play an audio clip of Julie Bill. And, and hopefully we've, we've put in motion to uh, have, try to get her on, the uh, Wednesday night blog talk, if it be the most times will, we can get her on and speak to her about all of these things because she's very, very knowledgeable about this biometric technology and all of these smart cards and, and things that they're using. But I want to play a, uh, a quick audio clip of her, and then when we come back, we'll, we'll speak a little bit about it and continue on uh, with, with the news. And now I'm joined by Julie Beale. Julie's a single mum from North Wales and her website is getmindsmart.com. Get mind, I've got to try and pronounce that right so you can understand exactly what I'm saying, getmindsmart.com. Hi Julie and welcome to Dialect. Thank you very much, Tony. Now you've been looking into Global Smart ID. Uh, what is this? Global Smart ID is a name that I've I've applied to it, but but it's uh, it's, it's only got um, a name that, that the experts use at the moment, which is Federated ID. They've only just started uh, actually uh, t trying to sell it to the public, but it's not been talked about in the public or aired in the media. Okay, well, so what's the idea of it? The idea of uh, Global Smart ID is to identify yourself remotely um, over the internet um, for payments, um, for, uh, for accessing services online, including government services, because the UK government is about to make all of its services all of them are going to be online only. Well, it certainly seems like the government is trying to push everything online. I mean, with this universal credit, that's just one thing. But it seems like a lot of things, they're trying to make everything happen online. Things like uh, accounting, uh, submitting accounts, tax uh, returns, all this kind of thing. So the idea is that uh, you remotely, online, can identify who you are. So why haven't we heard about this in the news? It's a massive story. I have absolutely no idea why, why, why it's not being aired in the news, especially with all the stuff with, with the NSA at the moment, because this is going to entail even more uh, uh, profiling of individual people. So what's it's the connection, sold. though, Julie? What's the connection between this and the NSA GCHQ story? Well, it's sold as something. You know, When they start marketing it, they say, we will protect your identity for you. So it's an identity provider like Google or PayPal or Microsoft, Verizon, Experian, they will look after all of your credentials for you. So everything is digitized, um, your passport, um, your driving license, your employment ID, everything will be digitized, the birth certificate, and it's effectively handing all of those things over to an identity provider 
and um, they will authorise your access to things online, including government services. Well, hang on a minute, because, uh, I mean, surely that may be something the government should do, but surely not private companies. I mean, why should I go to Microsoft in order to guarantee who I am? Because then they're going to, obviously, they're going to start charging for that service. They're going to start having, you know, a, a, a They won't hook, charge a us. Uh, they're not going to charge us. Yeah, but they're charging the government. Rather than do it themselves, the government are privatising this even before it's begun. Yes, I know, and they're very proud of it as well. That It's all about outsourcing. Everything today is being outsourced, and this is yet another thing. All of our government is being handed over to American corporations, and everything is being stored in the cloud, including all of our social ID profiles, which are very, very very specific. Um, well, just give us an idea of how detailed they go, these profiles. Well, it, it depends uh, it, what kind of what kind of um, what, what kind of footprint you've you've made online. So, or, or the little breadcrumb, anything you've done. If you've bought something, if you've commented online, anything leaves a mark, and it is there forever. Well, and there, are com there are companies now that can sweep it all up. And it's called a, a social social profile or a social ID, and it's 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 used by by marketers, and the government is planning to use it for people to um, access their benefits online, which is coming with universal credit, and this is going to affect me. Well, why can't we just ignore this? Because I won't be able to get benefits <laughs> unless I sign in with an identity provider online and it's more than likely going to be using biometrics although in the sense that it will be probably it's looking like going to the post office with your passport because that is biometric or your NHS staff card so yes biometrics are enrolled they tell you that they keep your all your information private now really it, it does become more private but only in the sense that instead of signing up, or in, you know, like if, if you register with a website and you have to, say if you're going to buy something from someone and you register, instead of doing that, you, you just click on Google or Yahoo or Facebook and sign in this way. This is what this federated login is. And as soon as you do that, all of your, all of your information is shared with all the other people who have got, you know, signed up with Truly You or Jan Rain, uh, other other companies which are um, aggre aggregating this data, but the um, the the, uh, the actual website owner, um, instead of um, having this, this uh, the registration process um, themselves outsources it to the identity provider. So it, the, the the identity provider is a go between. And it's the website owner that pays for the service. For us, it's free because they're selling our data. Amazing. And this really does hook in, doesn't it, very, very closely with all of the data that's being trawled and collected by uh, GCHQ, the Signals Intelligence people, and the National Security Agency. Uh, the trouble, of course, is that, that a lot of information that we are um, you know, when we use the internet, particularly, maybe f our phone as well, um, that starts to become a valuable commodity, particularly for advertisers. Extremely. It, all the, the power is, is shifting. It's all private. And, I mean, is there any way, do you think, um, that to avoid having this? I mean, you mentioned benefits. Obviously, if you need your benefit, you're going to have to buy into this global smart ID. Um, but uh, is there any and, way and to avoid it? It's also, it's also heralding the disappearance of cash. And I just want to mention that with Bitcoin and um, things like the bricks and pound, which are, it's, 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 a, it's a community currency. That's right. These are alternative currencies, aren't they? Yeah, which obviously I really back all of the principles of them, but you have to picture it as a global system. If, it, if any of those succeed on a large scale, then they also require ID authentication online so it's all about trust this is the word that goes all the way through trust and and you know that the, the uh, if if we have a whole world full of everyone's got a local currency and they're all all digital 
then you don't know who you're dealing with and you will have to have this kind of ID authentication system as well. So it's coming at us from all sides. And at the moment, the banks are going to be, you know, that, you know, it won't be long until if you want to make a payment online and um, that you'll have to do it by by um, going through an ID provider first. And then not long after that, there won't be any more cash. So all transactions will be re recorded and auditable. And then everything is stored on a little chip. And at the moment, the technology is shifting either it's going to either be on a smart card or in the, just in your smartphone. So basically the smart cards are until everyone's got a smartphone. And that contains that little chip, all of your, um, you know, the, or your ability to access your ID online and prove that's who you are. So if that's used for everything, it's just ridiculous that we're turning this society into one that relies on tiny little microchips and a large, you know... Well, it's a bit Orwellian, Julie, isn't it? And I mean, well, I'm, I'm also a bit concerned because uh, we know that the RFID chips, the uh, radio frequency identification chips, are uh, being used, uh, at least trialled anyway, in schools. And the idea is to get young people uh, used to using these little tiny chip things. No one really knows uh, where can read them. So, you know, you know kids could be um, tracked even whilst they've left school uh, if they've got their chip um, with them. Uh, and it's almost like the way to get the society used to using this technology is to actually try and make it attractive to young people. Yes, absolutely. It is really important to remember where this goes. It's definitely, at the moment, there's no doubt that it's all going into this little chip and it will either be in a card or on your phone. So all right, so that was some... Um audio there of uh of julie bill and hopefully we can get her on the wednesday night show because she has her own website and a lot of information when it comes to what's going on with this smart id card and this biometric technology all right so what i want to focus on here is the fact that we spoke about the dollar collapsing spoke about Bitcoin, she spoke about the BRICS, these other currencies which also are already centered around biometrics and authentication to where you're going to have to identify yourself. You want to use money, you're going to have to let whatever you're trying to, to use that money for, who you are, in order to do your purchasing. Again, this, if you can't see how this is developing around the mark of the beast when it comes to buying and selling, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, it's right there in your face. Now, the, the the point I want to make here is we read about the article in Vermont. National ID is going to be mandatory in Vermont and other states coming in America 2014, mandatory. Obamacare, health insurance, mandatory, 2014, starting January 1st and, and going forward. Also, on the other side, Across the Atlantic Ocean and the UK, <clears throat> this smart ID card is going to be rolled out and is going to be mandatory in 2014. Because, again, if we understand that the power is going to shift from America over to the European Union, then the European Union must have these same measures in place before America falls. They must have these same things in place, and these things are happening at the same time in both America and the U.K., simultaneously, same time. It's not by coincidence. Now, it's my opinion that when the power shifts over to the Ten Horns, to the European Union, that the U.K. will be the headquarters of the of the Ten Horns. The reason I say that from my UK residents and those people who have lived in the UK, you'll know that the United Kingdom is one big surveillance state, bigger than America. It's the biggest surveillance state in the world. They have cameras everywhere. They have already the biometric technology and all these things already in place on a high level, on a, on a top-notch level. 
And um, another thing is because the UK is like a is like an island. It's like a big island. So it's easier to control the masses on a big island than it is for them to be on a huge continent. Because now you don't have to have much border control. How you see how in America, how they're talking about the, the border between Mexico and Canada, that's all about border control. That's all about keeping people in, not uh, not keeping people out. It's about keeping American people in and, from, and people that are in America from escaping. So when you have an island like that, you don't have to have those measures in place as much. It's easier to control the population. They can't go anywhere unless they have a ship. They're not going to just jump out of the ocean. You can't swim swim anywhere. It's too far. All right. So I believe that the UK, everything when it shifts over, the UK will be ground zero for the Ten Horns. That's how everything is 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 is, is looking. And again, they had to have things in place there first before the collapse of America. That's why you see it on a higher surveillance level than America for right now. All right. So um, so moving on from. And 2014 is going to be one hell of a year. I'm, I'm just going to say it's going to be the year of the uh, of the bio, of biometrics, with, with with everything dealing with biometrics. We talked about the FBI rolling out their mandatory 50 state biometric program to to be able to identify terrorists and criminals. Now you have the smart IDs being rolled out mandatory for 2014. Everything is centering around biometrics, smart cards, smartphones and RFID chips. It's what the world we're living in is coming to. All right, more biometrics. This comes off the heel.com. December 3rd, 2013. It says here, Administration to review facial recognition technology. The Obama administration on Tuesday said it plans to review the privacy implications of Facial recognition technology. Lawmakers and privacy advocates have expressed fears that tech companies and government agencies are using facial recognition technologies to track people, often without their knowledge. The Commerce Department said it recognizes those concerns and will work with tech groups, privacy advocates, and online advertising trade associations to identify them. Facial recognition technology has the potential to improve services for consumers, support innovation by businesses, and affect identification and authentication online and offline, said Larry Strickling, the Administrator of Commerce's National Telecommunications and Information Administration. So again, they're selling it to you as this great thing, this great service, this great technology. It's great. Yeah, it's great for you. It's not great for us. It's not great to be spied on. And, 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 you know, have people watching you and looking at you in, in your home, in your, in your private life. You, you know, you're not bothering nobody. You're not doing anything, but yet you're being spied on because you could be a potential terrorist or a potential criminal, or you could be committing fraud. It says here, however, the technology poses distinct consumer privacy challenges and the, import, and the importance of securing face prints and ensuring consumers Appropriate control over their data is clear, he said. In February 2012, the Obama administration tasked the NTIA with bringing together tech companies, advertising firms, and advocacy groups to work on digital privacy issues. The agency completed an 18-month review of mobile app privacy policies and will turn to facial recognition technology in early 2014. Strickling said the discussions could include an examination of the privacy risk associated with the use of photo databases in stores and other commercial settings and face prints as a unique biometric identifier. Lawmakers have sounded the alarm about the growing use of facial recognition on the Internet and by law enforcement officials. In a letter last month, Senator Al Franken asked the NTIA to explore facial recognition concerns, citing specific concerns with the way Facebook is cataloging its users' profile pictures. Franken on Tuesday held the NTIA's move as great news for privacy, while pointing to 
expansive facial recognition programs like one at the FBI. While facial recognition can be useful, these programs don't do enough to protect privacy, and they are just the beginning of what is a growing technology, Franken said. Commerce agencies' process will provide an important opportunity to advance privacy protections for this powerful new technology, he said. Senator Ed Markey also applauded the agency's move. Clear policies that support consumer privacy are crucial as facial recognition technology is developed and deployed, he said. While these technologies hold great promise for innovation, consumers, not companies, should too be, be in control of their sensitive personal information, including having the choice of choice to uh, uh, affirmatively opt in to being subject to facial recognition or detection. The agency said the first meeting about the technology will take place February 6, 2014. Again, they're telling you that you should have privacy, but do you think that they're actually going to give you privacy with this technology? Because, again, they, they'll string you along and say, sure, you should have privacy. Yeah, we'll give you privacy. But when it's all said and done, you're not going to get any privacy. They'll just go back and say, well, we were mistaken or, well, we lied or we were misinformed or, you know, they'll make up any excuse to justify why there's no privacy or to why you're being surveilled. So this is America. All right. Now let's shift over to the Ten Horns. At the same time this is happening in America, shift over to Europe and see it simultaneously happening in Europe. This comes off of Europa.eu. It says here, October 22, 2013, EU-funded project to take biometric security, security systems to the next level. In recent years, we've seen face voice and fingerprint identification software move from sci-fi films into real-life affordable devices such as smartphones and tablets. The Tabula Rasa Consortium, which is EU research and innovation investment, has set out to identify just how well this new software works, in particular against the growing phenomenon of spoofing, for example, using everyday materials such as makeup, photographs, and voice recordings to subvert or directly attack biometric systems. So what they're saying here is that in the term analogy of spoofing, which is being able to hide yourself through makeup or changing your voice patterns to, to get around biometrics, that they now need to step up the biometric technology because people are being able to outsmart it. So let's step it up to a level to where they can't. All right? The beast unable to be beat or tricked so that it can continue to devour. That's what this is saying here. Biometric systems have proven to be one of the most efficient security solutions available today. However, some biometric sensor vulnerabilities still exist, including some which have been well published in the international media. The Tabula Rasa Consortium comprises 12 different organizations across seven countries that have worked together over a period of three years to research as many vulnerabilities as possible to develop countermeasures accordingly and ultimately a new breed of safer biometric systems. Again, notice the key words they use, safer, security, safety. They always use these words so that you feel, you feel good about yourself. I want to feel safe. Take away my freedoms and my, and my privacy for safety course of its research, Tabula Rasa hosted a spoofing challenge which invited researchers from around the world to develop attack plans and to attempt to deceive various biometric systems. Participants showed that there are many different and creative ways to attack the systems. 
The most innovative attack proposed during this challenge used makeup to spoof a 2D face recognition system and succeeded in being recognized as the victim. Other contestants used well-known attacks such as photographs, masks, or fake fingerprints, gummy fingers, to successfully spoof the system. Neely Crowe's European Commission of Vice President said, many of us keep personal and confidential information on our smartphones and tablets, so we need to have confidence that we can fully rely on these biometric tools. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, whatever is personal that you think is on your smartphone or tablet, they have full access to, so it's no longer personal. They know everything that's going on on that smartphone and that tablet. The European Commission is pleased with Tabula Rasa's success so far. No other research group has achieved such advanced results in biometrics to date. Dr. Sebastian Marcel, coordinator of the Tabula Rasa project, said it would have been impossible to conduct such large-scale research and to collaborate with so many EU partners without the investment from the European Union, as well as more secure devices and information. The improved software will offer quicker logins to IT equipment and faster, more accurate border control and passport verification. We believe that many different organizations will be in interested in our research, including technology companies, post offices, banks, manufacturers of mobile devices, or online service providers. So again, convenience. It'll be easier access. It'll be quicker access. The EU invested 4.4 million euros in the Tabula Rasa project, which was used alongside a 1.6 million euro investment by the consortium to carry out the extensive research and testing involved. The Tabula Rasa research project has made an extensive list of possible spoofing attacks evaluated the vulnerability of biometric systems to such attacks and developed countermeasures that, for instance, detect signs of liveness, for, exa for example, blinking, perspiration, and improve security of biometric systems. Tabula Rasa has already transferred five of these countermeasures to companies. This in-depth knowledge about spoofing attacks allows European industries to maintain their leadership by improving conception of future spoofing proof biometric sensors, thus opening up the huge potential of biometric technology. So now because they want to make this technology spoof proof, it gives them a reason to now ramp up this technology of biometrics. Now we can start getting funded from more grants and funds from the government and from corporations to ramp up this technology. Let's make it as good and as accurate and precise as we can make it, as foolproof as possible. Because, again, if you can't foolproof or spoofproof the term they use, what good is it in controlling the population? The project is expected to create jobs within the European SME sector as the results are integrated into commercialized solutions. For example, Key Lemon, a Swiss-based startup, has integrated a face recognition software countermeasure developed by Tabula Rasa into a final product. The expertise developed in the Tabula Rasa project helped Key Lemon to secure a Series A investment of $1.5 million dollars creating jobs within the company. Morpho, the world leader in biometric solutions, is also deeply involved, bringing its invaluable expertise and market vision to the consortium. So the world leader in biometric solutions is called Morpho, as in morph. What morph? Angels. Angels can morph. Man angels can transform. They're letting you know this is fallen angel technology, morpho. And what's another 
advantage to this great biometric technology is going to create more jobs. So you will go work for the beast and continue to build up the beast infrastructure to destroy you. You're building up the technology that's going to destroy and track and su surveil everybody. That's what this, um, that's this another uh, benefit that they would say this great uh, privacy free surveillance technology. So again, we see it happening in America. And we see side by side with America, it's happening simultaneously in Europe to make way for the fall of America and the the uh, the power grab of the Ten Horns from America. All right. Now, moving to our our last piece of information here. And this is going to round it all out. This is going to tie everything in so far that we've discussed. It says here, uh, this comes off of uh, ok-safe.com. It says here, Real ID, Biometric Facts fact Sheet, and Proposed Legislation. The final chapter in a systematic plan for a single global biometric ID system. Creating a global biometric ID system. After 9-1-1, Congress passed many pieces of security legislation. The Real ID Act of 2005, for example, sets federal standards for state driver's license ID cards. However, Real ID is not about 911 or stopping terrorism. Like many other federal programs, Real ID is about biometric enrollment. So it's got nothing to do with terrorism. It's all about getting you in the database. And again, there's so many movies that come to mind with this. I mean, you can just look at all the movies that are so-called sci-fi. And you see this happening in the movies. They're putting it right before your very eyes, what they plan on doing and what they're doing. Biometrics relies on computers to automatically identify individuals based on unique physical characteristics. Many nations, states, municipalities, organizations, schools, and businesses are already using biometrics, like facial recognition digital fingerprinting, and iris recognition. The result is a slow, methodical, global enrollment process filling databases with personal biometric information. Robert Mockney, Department of Homeland Security, stated that information sharing is appropriate around the world and DHS plans to create a global security envelope of internationally shared biometric data that would permanently link individuals with biometric ID, personal information held by governments and corporations. So here you have DHS, Department of Homeland Security, created because of 911, because of terrorism, saying that they plan on creating a global biometric system but DHS was just supposed to be for the Department of Homeland Security just for protecting America why are they in a global agenda why are they in a in a global uh you know um technology into this global scheme remember this is the same DHS that by how many billion rounds of hollow point ammo, more ammunition would uh it would be enough for a thirty year long war, so they've bought enough ammunition for thirty years of war. You would think, well, if they're fighting terrorism, 
and they needed ammunition, then they could just buy it, you know, as need be. So why the the military buildup of ammunition? And at the same time, they are creating a global biometric ID system because, again, through the National Defense Authorization Act, you can be a terrorist at home in America or you can be a terrorist abroad. So they need to be able to track you all across the world just in case you somehow manage to get out of the country or you're any place in the world. They need to know what's going on with you. They need to know all your information. All right, they need to have total control of you on the grid. Threats to freedom. The Department of Homeland Security is creating a global biometric system of identification and economic control so that biometrics becomes the common international denominator identifying us to governments and corporations. However, such a system destroys national sovereignty, removing control of the people over their government. This system threatens religious freedom, privacy, states' rights, the rights of representation, and our ability to redress grievances, states' sovereignty, and national sovereignty. Global information sharing that affects all Americans violates the Fourth Amendment and could produce the and, and, can, and can produce an ID theft pandemic. As governments and corporations build economic systems tied to biometrics, ID theft would permanently destroy those systems. If a PIN number or a Social Security number is compromised, they can be changed. But one cannot replace a face, a hand, or an eye used for biometric ID. Any compromised biometric economic system becomes instantly useless. A global ID theft pandemic presents legitimate religious concerns since it could result in a new technology for identification and financial control, such as Solmark's RFID tattoo, or as some call it, RFID mark. This technology stores data and transmits personal identifiable information. It is placed on the skin rather than under the skin, like a standard RFID chip. So which it's etched into the skin, but not necessarily under the skin. To many Christians, such technology may be the mark of the beast depicted in biblical prophecy, Revelations 13, 16, and 17. This passage describes a universal system applying to all that links one's body to the control of financial transactions like biometrics. Therefore, biometrics and global information sharing threaten the religious beliefs of millions of Christians. Biometrics represents a complete disregard for all religious beliefs. According to AAMVA's website, religious rights are on a collision course with so-called security concerns. Religious rights are on a collision course. To accomplish biometric enrollment, many states have pulled or denied religious exemptions. For valid without photo, driver's license ID cards, this action threatens the belief of uh, Mennonites and some other small religious sects. Many Jews strongly object to biometrics' ability to catalog humanity, as occurred during the Holocaust. So they've already used this biometric platform during the Holocaust. If you want to know about it, you can research it. Research IBM and the Holocaust. They were they were um, assigning numbers to people during the Holocaust. Their experimental 
subjects. So they already had a numbering system and a, a, a marking and a, a tracking system set up during that time. And now a lot of stuff is used during the time of Nazi Germany is now being used on steroids in America and in the European Union. They've taken that and they've now magnified it a million fold. It was a it was a a a, a test run, a, a beta test. And not just from a technology standpoint, but from a social standpoint with the, the legislation and the laws and the rhetoric. Also, under real ID, control over the driver's license ID card will pass from states to the federal government and the international organizations running the biometric and data sharing them. So now, with the real ID that's coming in 2014, now the driver's license will have no more effect in being just for that state. It's going federal now. Everything is going federal. So you're going to have federal health care. You're going to have federal school curriculum and everything associated with Common Core. And you're going to have a federal ID, which will bypass your state driver's license. So no longer it just it will be just conducive to just the state. It's now federal. Everything's going federal. And you see how this is being implemented into a global system. So it moves from state to federal to global. It says this violates the Tenth Amendment, which limits federal powers and retains more direct powers for state control where the people have far more ac access to elected representatives. So bypass the states, everything now goes under the federal government. This access protects representation. Under real ID, the people have no representation with, with those who control them, and once data is shared, there can be no redress or grievances. First Amendment. As a result of these threats, the most liberal and most conservative have found common ground to defend their civil rights. DHS understands these threats to constitutional rights and has therefore resorted to deceit rather than transparency, perpetrating the ultimate betrayal of public trust. Now, remember, let's go back a little bit to Janet Napolitano, who said that um, expect a major terrorist event and natural disaster to hit America. Expect it. It's going to happen. So now it should make sense as to why they need the biometric system in place and all the weapons and ammunition in place. So when this goes down and all hell ensues, they will have complete control. Just like Hitler did in Nazi Germany. 911 green light for global ID-tation. The creation of such a system has nothing to do with 911 or terrorism. 911 provided the opportunity to fast forward federal plans for biometrics and linked databases that began first in 1986 and to force an international biometric passport and biometric ID standard on other nations that began in 1995. To create this system, there must be enrollment, driver's license, passports, military ID, etc. International biometric and document standards to ensure global sharing. Linked databases providing global access to personal biometric identification data, financial information, medical information, demographic information, etc. Profiling. The three main entities 
this system are driving this system are, number one, the American Association of Motor Vehicle Administrators, AAMVA, the International Civil Aviation Organization, the ICAO, and three, the Department of Homeland Security, DHS. AAMVA is an international association of motor vehicle and law enforcement officials. AAMVA is responsible for international biometric driver's license ID card standards and an international information sharing agreement, the driver's license agreement. The most recent AAMVA driver's license ID standard is the 2005 Personal Identification AAMVA International Specification Driver's License ID Card Design. This driver's license ID standard, the DLA and other document standards requirements are requirements cited in Real ID HR 418 and or Real ID Notice of Proposed Rulemaking. Currently, most states share information through AAMVA instead of sharing directly between states. <clears throat> Compacts govern how and what information is shared. However, states must join the DLA to comply with Real ID. The DLA will link state databases with Mexico, Canada, and other nations that join the DLA. Therefore, state participation in Real ID violates the U.S. Constitution's Article 1, Section 10 that prevents states from entering into compacts or agreements with a foreign power. So do you see how they're able to just bypass the, own, the, the laws that they created and just circumvent them and just completely disregard them and just go around them and nothing happens, no pushback? No being taken to court, no people up in arms, but yet you get caught jaywalking, it's a fine and you might go to jail. AAMVA is mentioned 30 times in NPRM, 150 times in the Real ID Final Rules of January 11, 2008. AAMVA's influence over international, federal, and state driver's license ID card laws is undeniable. Under Real ID, state driver's license ID cards provide enrollment, and AAMVA provides the document and database linking system for global biometrics. ICAO monitors international travelers design the biometric e-passport required for visa waiver nations and used by the U.S. and is an agency of the United Nations. Pressure from the U.S. has forced many nations to adopt the ICAO e-passport system so that global enrollment into e-passport has reached 50 million annually. The e-passport document stores personal biometric identification in its RFID chip. Real ID photos comply with ICAO biometric data interchange formats, same as e-passport, making state photos compatible with global facial recognition standards. These interoperable Standards serve the purposes of global control and surveillance. Once this system is fully implemented, it will not matter if one has an Oklahoma or a Washington's driver's license or EU or U.S. passport. The ID system is the same. You see that? So once that system is all set, it's not going to matter what of those identifications you have. They're all going to be the same wherever you're at. Biometrics provides the foundation for programs like Security Prosperity Partnership, 
North American Union, and NAFTA Super Corridor that are dependent on a common ID system. DHS. The driver's license is the most powerful document we have, controlling our ability to buy, sell, and travel. Federal agencies want this power, but must first dismantle states' rights protected by the Constitution. DHS and other agencies already have legal access to state database records under the Driver's Privacy Protection Act of 1994. However, before wholesale access can occur, states must adopt common document and biometric standards, storing and sharing significant personal biometric data. States use AAMVA and are given grant money for data sharing through AAMVA Net. States are being prepared for more federal information gathering needs by collecting and sharing personal information for federal laws and programs such as selective service enrollment with Social Security number, E-Verify, child support enforcement with Social Security number, etc. But Real ID finishes the job of preparation by standardizing state document and biometric data and imposing an international data sharing system on states through AAMVA's DLA. So the National ID Card is the nail in the coffin to solidify and bring all of this together. You can bypass all the the legislation and, and all of these things for the driver's license because now you've created a, a a separate card, real ID card. You've created these, these separate agencies like the DHS that are exempt to certain laws and legislation under the Constitution. It says here, DHS has at least two backup plans if real ID is repealed. Control through new legislation. Allow state involvement in rulemaking. Keep biometric compatible photo standards. Require states to meet the standards, ending states' rights. Keep AAMVA net and give states grant money for DLA participation. Control through the driver's license ID card vendor. Impose real ID, document, and biometric standards through the driver's license vendor. This requires having only one vendor. In this case, L1 Identity Solutions, a merger of, of Visage and Identix. L1 is involved in passport production and with its recent acquisition of its only real competitor, Digimark will own 95% of the state driver's license market. L1 also owns McClendon and contractors to U.S. intelligence agencies. Despite L1's checkered past regarding Visage's exaggerated performance claims and corruption, L1 has a close relationship with the federal government, receiving millions of dollars in contracts. This is no surprise considering its board members and employee roster are filled with ex-government security officials. Intelligence gathering, biometric driver's license ID card designs, and even passport production are now under one roof, L1. This convenient relationship between the federal government and L1 fits into DHS plans for real-time surveillance, identification, and threat assessment of individuals. As the de facto issuer of driver's license ID cards, L1 can impose its real ID-like biometric product on states and work with the AAMVA and DHS to fulfill real ID goals. The Department of Homeland Security, protection or deception. After issuing the NPRM, DHS released 20 questions and answers about Real ID. In it, DHS denied creating a national ID card, creating a national database on applicants, requiring biometrics for state ID, or storing biometric information from state ID. 
DH claims are deceitful. Real ID is an international ID. Once state databases are ready for global sharing, DHS can exercise its legal rights to access state databases under the outdated DPPA and harvest state collected information through AAMVA net, described as the backbone of the system. The most significant security legislation written since 2001 has as its backbone an international organization over which U.S. citizens and their elected representatives have no control. So they create these international organizations like the DHS and the Central Bank, Federal Reserve, and by doing so, America has no control. So you have foreign entities within America that have control over America. You have no say-so. More proof that America is not a country. It is a foreign ran corporation. DHS denies the real ID requires biometrics, but the NPRM requires that state photos are compatible ICAO 9303 biometric data interchange formats, same as ePassport and the Privacy Impact Assessment for Real ID Act. In addition, as a result of the act, state databases will contain standardized photo images that will allow law enforcement agencies to use facial recognition technology to help apprehend criminals. And the state DMVs will be able to use the images and application data to prevent drivers whose licenses have been revoked in one state from obtaining them in another. Law enforcement will be using face recognition on driver's license ID databases. So, if you're in one state and your driver's license has been revoked, if you go to another state and try to get a driver's license, they will have a database in place to know, hey, you have a revoked driver's license in this state, you can't get a driver's license in our state because everything will be federal and no longer state. DPPA would also permit the sharing of state records with the FBI to fill its new billion-dollar biometric database. <clears throat> All right, so now here it is, the FBI. We talked about them. Now they're coming into play. Now they have access. Real ID does require photos compatible with facial recognition biometrics in any government agency accessing the linked database system can use any state collected photo with facial recognition software making it a biometric. The federal agency designed to protect us is deceiving us. State and federal agencies out of control. Real ID is a symptom of a society that has lost control of its government where international organizations have more influence over state and federal law than the people or their elected representatives. How can something like this happen? It is common for state and federal bureaucrat agencies to create the rules of a specific law. These rules are seldom reviewed or approved by elected officials. In the case of identification, we have two international organizations, AAMVA and ICAO that have strong influence over the rules. DHS can easily hide its international intentions deep within those rules and within the policies, procedures hidden within the international organizations themselves. This is why most state and federal oversight committees have missed these facts and thereby placed us in this dangerous position. Real ID and biometrics are the direct result of unsupervised out of control state and federal bureaucratic agencies influenced by international organizations like AAMVA and ICAO. All right, and, and these majority of these international organizations that have control and influence in America are out of Europe. The Ten Horns. So again, we're seeing the making America desolate and naked and eating her flesh slowly but, sh but, but surely. That's what it means to eat the flesh. 
eating, when you eat a piece of chicken, you're taking a bite and then another bite and then another bite until it's all gone, devouring it up. And that's what they're doing, one bite at a time, dismantling America. All right, it says here, for example, many state DMVs use facial recognition without the knowledge of legislature or the people. On March 1st, 2007, DHS issued Real IDs Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, revealing Real ID's global biometric connection through a single footnote in references to AAMVA. Facial recognition. The global biometric of choice, key to global surveillance. Why facial recognition? Facial recognition can use existing digital photo databases so that enrollment occurs without the individual's knowledge. AAMVA commissioned the International Biometric Group to evaluate biometrics in a database of 300 million. The 2003 report revealed facial recognition can be used to acquire faces from camera or video sources. Facial recognition databases can be created from images not originally collected for biometrics. Facial recognition can be used for public surveillance. It can be used on practically any digital facial photo or captured facial image, including closed circuit TV. Public surveillance is on the rise, like Great Britain with an estimated 500,000 surveillance cameras in London and 7 million nationally. So again, we talked about the UK. They have 7 million cameras in their country. 500,000 of those are in the city of London. DHS is spending millions of 3D facial recognition testing and high-resolution surveillance cameras. Why? Unlike 2D driver's license ID photos, 3D facial recognition accounts for changes in face, facial angle and lighting and therefore has only one purpose, public surveillance. In addition, DHS is collecting, buying, data mining, and storing huge amounts on average citizens, creating the most intimate personal profiles. Flying commercially, commercially may trigger a background check that reveals medical, financial, even sexual information about individuals. Potentially, this information can be used when individuals are identified in public using facial recognition. Computers will make real-time judgments about the person being identified. So what happens if one is incorrectly identified as a terrorist or since facial recognition can be used for enrollment and surveillance without the individual's knowledge, it was no surprise that ICAO and its stakeholders unanimously endorsed the Berlin Resolution for the use of facial recognition as the global interoperable biometric for machine assisted identi identity confirmation with MRTDs, machine readable travel documents. All right, let me see if there's any more here. Facial recognition tests. Facial recognition is being promoted as a tool against terrorism. But will facial recognition make us safer? Facial recognition failures are highly documented, even in AAMVA's 2003 International Biometric Group report. The following was concluded regarding its use. Poor performance, grossly exaggerated vendor claims, facial recognition will not perform successfully in a large database of 300 million, real-world real tests at Colorado's DMV revealed only about 1% accuracy, facial recognition has difficulty with glasses and facial hair. The DHS sponsored facial recognition vendor test 2006 also reflected inflated vendor estimates prompting biometric expert Ben Bavarian to state that the tests are only valid for the divine circumstances out of the NIST ITL labs 
And these tests are turned into marketing tools for vendors to push the products without doing the right things for the technology. So because there's a, a, a lower level of accuracy, you can understand now why they want to ramp up the biometrics. They want it to be 100% accurate. It says here, high-tech tools, human dignity, civil rights, testing, function, and security are secondary. Like facial recognition, DHS shares equal disregard for other testing procedures. On September 18, 2007, the Washington Post reported that weeks before key government tests of new radiation detection equipment, DHS officials helped contractors through repeated dry runs that enabled them to perform better during the examinations. Congress expected to use a long-awaited test to make a $1.2 billion decision. Congress was previously concerned that DHS misled them about the device's effectiveness, known as Advanced Spectroscopic Portals, or ASAPs. Instead of investing in real security, DHS spent millions on Boeing's virtual fence that did not work. DHS is also testing the virtual strip search machine, a.k.a. backscatter device, recently deployed in Phoenix. Another new item being tested is Project Hostile Intent that will identify terrorist intent by judging behavior and facial expressions. So now they're going to say that you are a terrorist based on your facial expression or based upon your behavior, how you're acting. You're a terrorist. This is what a machine is going to be able to somehow miraculously determine. Power, control, deceit, and failure. Consider the numerous technology failures, the deceit of government agencies, and the constitutional risk. How can we trust biometrics, biometric vendors, international organizations, and government agencies employing biometrics? Real ID grants DHS almost unlimited powers. DHS can also redefine their powers as they, as they see fit. PRM states that the official purpose of Real ID includes, but is not limited to, accessing federal facilities, boarding federal regulated commercial aircraft, entering nuclear power plants, and other purposes that the security shall determine. The section goes on to say, under the discretionary authority granted to the Sec Secretary of Homeland Security under, under the Act, may expand this definition in the future. Even real ID final rules are not final, being full of potential changes. So again, they can change the rules or the laws or whatever the legislation is at any time when it comes to this more of a reason that you can't trust them on top of the lies that they've already told. It says here, global biometric ID and database linking threaten religious rights, privacy, states' rights, and our sovereignty, creating a global system of financial control linked to our bodies run by international organizations. The most powerful document we possess will be out of our control. Potentially, real ID requirements could be imposed on banking, Medicare, or cashing Social Security checks, school ID, etc., or any form of identification relating to a federal agency. So they just told you right there how it would be attached to spending and your money. Database linking sharing will certainly result in an ID theft pandemic. The consolidation of power in one document increases the chances of ID fraud just as data sharing increases the risk of ID theft. Facial, recogni facial recognition will not work effectively on terrorists unless they submit to enrollment and shave. Countries will in issue biometric ID based on their own breeder documents, for example, birth certificate. Based on those breeder documents, e-passports will be accepted at face value. 
persons issuing foreign e-passports must be experts in identifying fraudulent breeder documents or the biometric ID permanently legitimizes the fraud. This system places our national security on the shoulders of government employees in other countries. Every government to which we link databases must have secure records, buildings, information technology systems, and totally trustworthy employees protecting highly personal information collected globally. DHS TSA lost a hard drive with thousands and thousands of employee records. Great Britain recently lost two disks containing personal information of 25 million people. How will DHS secure ID systems of other nations? If a nation builds financial systems on biometrics and the biometrics are compromised, the entire system becomes useless. I mean, that, that, this is total madness. DHS has difficulties with information sharing between all levels of law enforcement. DHS plans to expose highly personal information of U.S. citizens. Does it mean other nations will provide the U.S. with accurate and highly personal information on all their citizens? So basically, you have to have the whole world on the same page with no mistakes in order for this system to work. And it can't even work individually within the country itself. Real ID, Western Hemisphere Travel Initiative, e-passport, transportation worker identification credential, Backscatter, virtual fence, project hostile intent, etc., are indicators of the current DHS mindset that can't keep its hands out of the technological cookie jar. While technical failures mount, our nation becomes less secure. DHS is wasting billions of dollars on high tech failures instead of investing in fences and people desperately needed on our borders and in our ports. The DHS mindset has not escaped the notice of the Government Accounting Office that cited many problems with DHS, giving it a several failing grades. All right, and that's pretty much it on that particular document. So that goes into a lot deeper understanding of these agencies who are controlling and have access to all these databases and how this is all going global. You showed how America is, uh, you know, you're looking at all these countries going away from the dollar because the collapse of the dollar is imminent, how they're implementing biometrics on both sides uh, in America and in Europe simultaneously. They're uh, implementing the real ID card in 2014 in America and in the UK. Uh, Obamacare starting in 2014. So people are looking for a sign. People are looking for one major event, and they don't understand we're in the event now. It's not an overnight one big nuclear bomb that's going to set it off to where people are looking for that sign. It's happening now. It's happening incrementally, but it's it's happening fast. It's happening swiftly. And while all this is happening, majority of people have no idea this is going on. They're so drunk and lost in the ways of the world. Even if this information is brought out to them, they could probably care less. As long as they can continue to live in this world and, and operate and do the things they love to do, um, they won't they won't um, you know have any type of pushback until it's too late. Until things like food are taken away, um, until there's mass riots and, and total chaos everywhere you look. You know, people won't really care until then. And even then, they'll be looking to the government for, for solutions. All right, so this concludes the uh, information that we had to bring out tonight on um, the biometrics. Next week, 
to be the most ties will. Um, we're going to go into another aspect and facet of this. We're going to talk about the uh, the uh, the robot army and robotics that they're building up. Um, the fact that they want to replace people with robots, and um, also the transhumanist and cyborg agenda of making man into machine. Half man, half machine. You thought it was a movie? You thought these things were movies? These things were foreshadowing of things to come. These, these things were predictive programming and getting people conditioned. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. 